Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And so, Lloyd. We all know him, we all love him, more or less. And overall, I'd say he's a pretty well-written character. But there is one season where Lloyd becomes one of the worst, most unlikable characters I've ever seen. I'm sure almost everybody knows what season I'm talking about. Crystallized, of course. Now, if you don't know much about Lloyd, I'll give you a, a quick rundown of his character and development over the f first 14 seasons. But I'm like, if you don't know much about Lloyd, then why would you be watching this video? Okay, so I'm going to start at the end of season 5, where Lloyd is told that he is on the path of becoming a master. This plot point is then picked back up in season 7, but isn't but it isn't very good. Not because of Lloyd, it's really because some of the other ninja are acting out of character in that season. Then at the end of season seven, Wu goes missing, so Lloyd has to take up the role of leader. Season eight also gets a really, really fantastic story. He meets Harumi, the Jade Princess, who he is in love with. But then Harumi reveals that all she wants to do is make Lloyd suffer and bring back the only the evil side of Garmadon. After this, Lloyd is broken and says he'll never trust anyone so easily ever again. In Season 9, a character named Mistake helps Lloyd through his depression after he believes that the ninja and his uncle are dead. Remember this next part, please. <laughs> Just remember this next part. This will be important later. Mistake is a full-blooded Oni. Oni, before this, were believed to be pure darkness. Mistake, the full-blooded Oni, remember that, sacrifices herself for Lloyd in the Resistance. Once again, please remember this part. Then, in both season 11 and 13, he meets people who he believes aren't who they say they are. Akita, because she hides her true self from Lloyd at, the, at first, and Vanya, because she is a princess. And that's Lloyd's story through the first 14 seasons. Then we get to Crystallize. In episode 12 of Crystallize, it's revealed that Harumi has been brought back by the Overlord. And you know what? Lloyd's interactions with Harumi really aren't that bad. Remember, this video is about Lloyd, not Harumi. Then, episode 30 happens when Harumi turns on the Overlord and cuts off his hand that he immediately grows back. After Lloyd defeats the Overlord, he's just okay with Harumi now. Harumi did turn on the Overlord, but that doesn't make up for everything she did in seasons 8, 9, and 15. She still killed at least a couple dozen people, including her own adoptive parents. She tried to kill the other ninja at least two or three times. She brought back some of the worst threats Ninjago has ever seen. Not to mention she traumatized you. And you just forgive her? Just like that? You're not even going to throw her in jail. Just because she turned against Silverlord. Doesn't mean she did a 180 on you too. And you had no involvement in her quote unquote redemption. Okay, now for Lloyd and Garmadon's relationship and Crystallize. I'd say that Garmadon and Crystallize is fairly decent. It's really not a bad continuation of his arc in the Oni trilogy. The problem here is Lloyd. But again, like Lloyd and Harumi's interactions, I'd say that Lloyd and Garmadon's relationship in the first three episodes that they're together in are pretty solid. But then they go into the sewer where they spend like the next five episodes. This is where Lloyd starts talking about how Oni are incapable of doing or feeling good. And this is just horrible. Does Lloyd really not remember the person who helped him back in Season 9? The person who died so that the Resistance could control the Stone Colossus? Let, re let me remind you, Mistake was a full-blooded Oni. 
and Garminon is only half Oni. By that logic, Lloyd should also be completely heartless, since he's like a quarter Oni. And they never stop arguing. In the very last scene that they talk to each other in, they are still arguing. And then, in the final shots of the season, they show Lloyd and Garminon helping each other like they've made up and are now on good terms. And then, those are its only powers. This is just bad writing. The whole season is building up towards Lloyd using his only powers to defeat the Overlord. In the final episode, he taps into his only powers, hits the Overlord once, gets scared of his own reflection, and stuffs the only side back down. And then he uses dragon powers to defeat the Overlord. <sighs> now, I've heard some people say that Lloyd using his only powers in the end would have been bad because then the show would have would be ending with Lloyd turning over to the dark side or giving in to the evil. And I think there's either one of two reasons why some people might think this. One, this is just their way of coping with this ending. They know it's wrong, but this is their way of justifying that, the ending. Number two, either these people haven't watched the show, which I know isn't true, or they're dumb. I know. I know that might be a bit harsh, but the whole point of Mustaka's character is one, filling in for Master Wu, two, showing us that not all Oni were pure darkness, and that some Oni could be good, and Garminon's whole arc in seasons 10 and 15 was learning about how to be good. Notice how he said to season 15, the same season where Lloyd is going through his Oni arc. You don't even have to... To go back to older seasons to see Oni being good. This is an arc with great build up and a horrible execution. And it kind of ruins Lloyd's character in my opinion. He is so unlikable in the last few episodes of the season. He's hating on people for no reason. He's forgiving people for no reason. It's just bad writing. Stop it. Okay. I've spent probably way too long on Lloyd and Chris lies. Let's move on to Dragon's Rising and talk about how the new show has redeemed Lloyd. Whew. Pretty sure I've already typed an essay's worth of words here. Probably more. <clears throat> yeah, no, definitely a lot more. So Lloyd is one of three main characters in Dragon's Rising, along with the two new, ca new characters, Aaron and Sora. At the end of episode three, Lloyd decides that he will train Aaron and Sora. And this is a perfect way to continue Lloyd's character. Finally following up on a plotline that was dropped like six years ago. And just being a breath of fresh air for Lloyd's character and Ninjago as a whole. <sighs> Seeing one of the original characters who we saw grow up and become the character he is now. Training students of his own is so great. And especially for Lloyd. Because he is now following Master Wu's footsteps and going down the path that Wu had set for him all the way back in Season 5. And not only do we see Aaron and Sora grow as ninja, but we also see Lloyd grow as a teacher. And if this was the only new thing that DR did with Lloyd, I would most likely still be making this video because... Season 1 of DR pretty much fixed all my problems with Lloyd. But then Season 2 happened. In Season 1, Episode 10, Lloyd becomes a conduit for one of the Source Dragons and absorbs some of its power. Something that no mortal was ever meant to do. Now like I said in, in my DR Season 2 video I uploaded a couple weeks ago, I didn't think that, that Lloyd becoming a conduit would have much effect on Lloyd or the story. But man, was I wrong. In season 2, Lloyd starts having visions about the Blood Moon, and this is because the Source Dragons have the power to see countless possible futures, and Lloyd is now gaining a, a little taste of that power. And these visions scale Lloyd so much that he's afraid to sleep. He's tired all the time, he has... Small panic attacks the first few times he sees the wolf mask warriors. There's even one point where he just completely loses it and begs the source 
dragons for help. There was one point in episode 2 where he manages to fight off one of these fishes, and I was worried that that was the end and that he would stop having these nightmares. But no, they last the whole season. He wants to find a way to get rid of them, but Rontu tells him that all he can do is learn to live with them. Now, season 2 isn't finished, so we don't know how Lloyd is going to deal with his visions. But what, we've, but what we've seen so far is probably the best Lloyd content since the Oni trilogy. Whew, okay. 1,521 words later, I'm finished. I really enjoyed writing the script, and I'm sure I'll enjoy editing it as well. I have really loved making the first few videos. I've made in this style and I can't wait to do more and I can't wait to do more. This is the type of video I've wanted to make for a long time and videos like this are some of my favorites to watch. But with that, if you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate it if you took two seconds to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.